Hi, it's Dr. Z. I'll be discussing the role of neurotransmitters in brain and behavior. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify six types of neurotransmitters and describe their functions in the body. You'll also be able to apply one or more of the neurotransmitters to yourself for application paper number two. Our first one is acetylcholine. As you're taking notes in class, you're using acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is released when learning new information, contracting muscle fibers, and aids in memory. So if you're taking notes right now, hey, you're moving your muscles to write, taking in new information, and hopefully consolidating the new information in your memory. Our second one is dopamine. What do you eat when you're sad or depressed? Most of you will say chocolate or carbs, right? Well, dopamine plays a role in this. Dopamine plays a role in movement, attention, learning, and pleasure. The words attention and pleasure are highlighted for different reasons. Attention refers to concentration and focus. Pleasure refers to things or food that bring about the sensation of joy or pleasure. So let me give you an example. How many of you check your smartphone one last time before going to bed? Well, doesn't that one last time stretch into 30 minutes, one hour, two hours? This is because research has shown that dopamine is released when we check our smartphones. That is, we get pleasure from checking social media or football scores online. And recall that dopamine plays a role in attention or focus. So your attention and alertness increases when dopamine's release, making you less tired, less sleepy, and you stay on your phone for hours. So think of this the next time you reach for the smartphone on your nightstand before going to bed. Dopamine also is associated with depression. Low levels in particular are associated with depression. And then high levels of dopamine are associated with schizophrenia. Our third one is serotonin. Ah, a picture of sleeping puppies. For most people, a picture of puppies brings a smile to your face or improves your mood. This picture is a visual trick to associate mood and sleep with the neurotransmitter serotonin. This neurotransmitter plays a role in regulating your mood, sleep, appetite, and aggression. Since serotonin plays a role in mood, it makes sense that low levels of serotonin are associated with depression and anxiety. And likewise, elevated levels are associated with better moods. If you paid any attention to TV commercials on medication for depression or anxiety, you may have heard the term SSRI. Well, the S stands for, guess what, serotonin. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. The medications Prozac, Zoloft, and Paxil are antidepressants that act on the neurotransmitter serotonin. Our fourth, ser our, sorry, our fourth neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. If you ever have trouble staying alert or awake, the neurotransmitter norepinephrine has a role in this. Norepinephrine affects eating, alertness, and wakefulness. Norepinephrine, along with dopamine, has come to be recognized as playing a large role in attention and focus. So drugs for ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder use norepinephrine and dopamine, and these drugs are Ritalin, Dexedrin, and Adderall. Our fifth one is endorphins. Do you ever feel good after working out? Well, endorphins have kicked in for you. Endorphins are released during exercise and reduce the pain and stress of exercise, while also positively affecting your mood. Athletes describe the high after competition, yet will not feel the pain of the exercise or competition until hours later or the next day. That is often why athletes will ice their muscles immediately after a game in anticipation of the pain that comes much later. As a psychologist, I recommend to students who are experiencing mild depression and anxiety that they should exercise 20 minutes for three times a week to get that natural mood high from the endorphins. Heck, take a brisk walk around the building before an exam to, re to reduce any test anxiety and be in a good mood. Our last one is GABA, and GABA keeps you calm and carrying on. 
If you're ever stressed out, I want you to trigger the neurotransmitter GABA. GABA has an inhibitory effect, meaning that it slows you down or slows down the effects of other neurotransmitters. One could say it has a calming effect. This makes sense when research shows that individuals with low levels of GABA tend to have depression and anxiety. In other words, individuals who tend to be high strung or anxious have, may have low levels of GABA. For those of you who have done yoga or meditation, you have naturally increased your GABA levels, helping you yourself be calm and relaxed. Green tea and oolong tea, almonds, bananas, and whole grains are natural sources of GABA. For individuals who are anxious and need medication, the group of drugs called benzodiazepines act on the neurotransmitter GABA. So medications like Valium, Xanax, Lorazepam, and muscle relaxers like Somas all use GABA. For application paper number two, one of your questions will be to imagine yourself as a neurotransmitter. What neurotransmitter would you want to be and why? You'll be asked to provide two personal examples and one textbook reference for this question. I'm looking forward to reading your papers.